okay so good evening to all in the morning session we have seen biochemistry of your amino acids now in continuation with that lecture we will see proteins we have seen this portion so amino acids their properties uh, their optical properties composition classification of amino acids what is essential what is non essential what is semi essential we have also seen the classification on the structure basis then we have seen the optical isomerism then uh, properties <laughs> properties of amino acids we have seen this we have seen the different color reactions for amino acids and protein because protein proteins are nothing but the they are the polymer of amino acid so they will have same color reactions we have seen this this also we have seen the non protein amino acids structure of protein first we see structure of protein so as i have told you it is nothing but the polymer of your amino acids proteins are nothing but the polymer of now they are formed by interaction of two amino acids so two amino acids will interact with each other to form a peptide bond so they are formed by peptide bond now two um, two amino acids will form one peptide bond likewise three amino acids will form two peptide bond four amino acids will form three peptide bond so likewise so you have to remember this how many number of uh, amino acid will form how many number of peptides because they used to ask question on this remember two amino acid if they come together they will form a one peptide bond three amino acids if they come together they they will form a two peptide bonds four amino acids will come together they will form a three peptide bonds you have to to be clear regarding this kitne amino acid se kitna peptide bond milega do amino acid ke beech mein ek hi bond banta hai teen amino acid ke beech mein do peptide bond milega char ke beech mein in the peptide bond likewise uh, if more than 50 amino acids they will form a bond then it is known as a simple peptide so more than 50 amino acid sequence is present in a protein then the protein is known as simple peptide now structure of protein can be determined by different way so there are there are three sequential uh, procedure sequential event that by which protein can be structure of protein can be determined first of all you have to hydrolyze the protein then you have to analyze the uh, amino acid qualitatively amount the amo, uh, amino acid qualitatively then you have to break down that protein into smaller peptide and lastly you have to analyze the amino acid sequence so that's how you can determine the structure of protein you you can determine the qualitatively amino acids then you can determine the number of peptides then you can hydrolyze the protein and into into smaller fragment and then you can determine the amino acid sequence is sequence may amino acid is protein may present that is different so for that uh, you have two kind of reagent first one is sagner's reagent first one is a sagner's reagent which is a one fluoro to four dinitrobenzene so remember this sagner's reagent they used to ask question on this sagner's reagent edmonds reagent is second second one is edmonds reagent so that is a phenyl isothiazide ye g pad ke liye dono bhi important hai Sagner's reagent क्या है, Edmonds reagent क्या है? So both these reagents they are used to determine the amino acid sequence present in the protein. Protein में amino acid का sequence क्या है? पहले alanine है, glycine है या histidine है? इसका sequence क्या है? वो analyze करने के लिए Sagner's reagent and Edmonds reagent. Sagner's reagent क्या है? One fluoro to four dinitrobenzene. Edmonds reagent क्या है? Phenyl isothiazide. That is the Edmonds reagent. see we are not uh, i'm not uh, i'm not teaching you uh, for your semester exam so i will not go in the detail how the sagner's reagent what is the procedure okay how what is the edmonds reagent what is the procedure how you can determine the sequence of amino acids so i'm not going to taught you that simply i'm just going to tell you the points which are important for gpad exam nipr exam government pharmacist exam and other exams so we have to remember what is sagner's reagent So it is a one fluoro to four dinitrobenzene. What is Edmonds reagent? It is phenyl isothiazide. Now uh, structure of protein. We we have different structure of protein. So depending upon the organization. So protein structure will be organized in the principal three organization organization level. So first one first one is known as the primary structure of protein. Second one is known as secondary structure of protein. Then tertiary structure of protein and then quaternary structure of protein. These are the organizational level of structure of protein so what happens in the primary structure of protein 
primary structure mein kya kya rahega primary structure mein co and h bond so that is known as a peptide bond so in the primary structure amino acids sequence they are joined together by peptide bond there will be not any involvement of hydrogen bond or no any metabolic process or no any electrostatic process primary structure mein sirf co and h bond matlab peptide bond rahega usme koi hydrogen bonding nahi rahega usme koi aapka disulfide bonding nahi rahega usme na koi aapka electrostatic bonds rahega ya fir van der waals attractive forces bhi ऐसा कुछ नहीं रहेगा वहाँ पे एक सिंपल लीनियर स्ट्रक्चर रहेगा प्रोटीन का लीनियर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन जॉइंट ऑल अमोन एसिड जॉइंट बाय पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड ओके सो पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड लीनियर स्ट्रक्चर एंड द इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द एन टर्मिनस टू सी टर्मिनस एन टर्मिनस मीन्स अमोनो टर्मिनस एंड सी मस सी मीन्स कार्बोक्सिक्स कार्बोक्सिक अमोन एसिड विल फॉर्म टू अमोन एसिड विल फॉर्म वन पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड थ्री अमोन एसिड विल फॉर्म टू पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड्स ओके एंड फोर अमेन एसिड फॉर्म थ्री पेप्टेड बॉन्ड एंड लाइक वाइज इसके ऊपर क्वेश्चन आ चुका है जीपेड में कि टू अमेन थ्री अमेन एसिड विल फॉर्म हाउ मेनी पेप्टेड बॉन्ड तो दे विल फॉर्म टू पेप्टेड बॉन्ड इसके ऊपर क्वेश्चन आ चुका है देन नाउ सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन सो इन एडिशन टू प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर प्राइमरी स्ट्रक्चर में जो पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड था तो यहाँ पे वो पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड तो रहेगा इन एडिशन टू दैट क्या रहेगा सो इन एडिशन टू पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड इन द सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन you have hydrogen bonding among the different amino acids so here is little bit hydrogen bonding go there and remember the secondary structure of protein is stabilized by hydrogen bonding this was again a question secondary structure of protein or uh, that uh, alpha helical structure or beta plated sheet that are stabilized by which kind of bond that is a hydrogen bond usme peptide bonds bhi hote peptide bonds to obviously honge the structure is stabilized by the helical structure is stabilized by that hydrogen bond beta plated sheet is stabilized by hydrogen bond okay yeah bro this ke upar question aa chuka now there are two two structures uh, uh, structures depicted in the secondary structure of protein the first one is known as a alpha helical structure second one is known as a beta plated sheet beta plated sheet so alpha helical structure it is as the name indicate it is a helical in nature so it is a spiral in nature so the whatever amino acid sequence is there so it will form peptide bond and the hydrogen interaction between amongst the amino acid sequence that will uh, that will that because of the hydrogen interaction or hydrogen bonding the linear structure will become a spiral structure in this so that is known as a alpha helical structure so each in each helix there is a 3.6 amino acids so in each helix in each helical structure of your uh, each helix of your alpha helical structure of protein so here you will have 3.6 amino acid the distance of each helix is around 0.45 nanometer right helical alpha helix structure is more stable than left handed alpha helix so there are two alpha helix so right handed and left handed so right handed alpha helical structure of protein is more stable than left handed remember there is one amino acid known as a proline so which can disrupt the alpha helical structure of protein so suppose that a protein banne ja raha hai okay secondary structure ka और उसमें बाई चांस प्रोलिन या फिर प्रोलिन अमोन एसिड अमोन एसिड उसमें आ गया सो दैट विल डिस्टर्ब द अल्फा एलिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन तो प्रोलिन अमोन एसिड विल डिस्टर्ब द अल्फा एलिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन सो अल्फा एलिकल स्ट्रक्चर में प्रोलिन अमोन एसिड नहीं रहेगा अगर वो आता है तो वो जो स्ट्रक्चर है वो डिस्टर्ब होता है देन बीटा प्लेटेड शीट इट वॉज अगेन प्रपोज बाय पॉलिंग एंड कोरे बोथ अल्फा एलिकल स्ट्रक्चर एज वेल एज बीटा प्लेटेड शीट it was the these two structure secondary structure of protein was proposed by pauling and cori these are the my names of scientists we will not go in the detail okay, how beta plated sheet is the, i will show you later on but i'm not going in the detail how alpha helical structure will form what are the properties and all that so that you can read from the book that is not important for your gpt now next one is a tertiary structure of protein it is nothing but three dimensional arrangement of structure of protein now in addition to peptide bond in the secondary structure there was a hydrogen bond and now in the stru- tertiary structure so in addition to your uh, peptide bond hydrogen bond there is a another bond known as a disulfide bond okay so three dimensional arrangement of protein then hydrogen bonds then disulfide bonds ionic bonds pentaol forces and hydrophobic interaction so there was a question once i think in ingpet so disulfide type of bond is present in the one of the following structure of protein primary 
secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and subsidy. So, tertiary and quaternary both will have a disulfide bond, hydrogen bond, peptide bond, ionic bonds, metabolic process, and hydrophobic or three dimensional arrangement of protein structure. Now, quaternary two or more polypeptide held together by hydrogen bond, disulfide bond, ionic bond, and hydrophobic interaction. So, your tertiary structure is एक प्रोटीन है टर्शियरी स्ट्रक्चर का प्रोटीन है एक इससे दो पेप्टाइड एक पे के साथ बनेंगे तो उसको बोलेंगे क्वार्टरनरी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन सो फॉर एग्जांपल इन केस ऑफ योर हीमोग्लोबिन सो हीमोग्लोबिन इज अ क्वार्टरनरी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन हीमोग्लोबिन कंसिस्ट ऑफ फोर पॉलीपेप्टाइड फोर पॉलीपेप्टाइड दैट इज अ ग्लोबिन चेन फोर ग्लोबिन चेन एंड आयरन आयरन कंटेनिंग ग्लोबिन्स दैट इज नोन एज हीमोग्लोबिन फोर पॉलीपेप्टाइड फोर पॉलीपेप्टाइड चेन in molecules that is iron so we have seen the structure of hemoglobin when we are discussing about the blood very recent what are the different methods to determine the structure of protein so primary primary structure kaise determine karenge uske baad mein baad mein apan baad mein dekhenge next slide mein uska thoda detail mein diya hai now just in our secondary structure and tertiary structure of protein is determined by x ray crystallography x ray crystallography x ray crystallography which is the most commonly used method this was question in i think gpet 21 recently jo gpet hua tha 21 ka isme ye question tha so secondary and tertiary structure of protein it can be determined by uh, x ray crystallography nmr and uh, two option was there two more option was there so your answer was x ray crystallography so iske upar already ye gpet 21 mein question aa chuka hai so remember these points what is meant by sagner's reagent what is meant by edmonds reagent What do you mean by primary, secondary, tertiary structure? किस structure में कितना bond होता है? कौन सा bond होता है? ये important है, ठीक है? Quaternary structure में क्या होता है? कौन सा bond होता है? So primary structure में सिर्फ क्या रहेगा आपका? Peptide bond रहेगा. Secondary structure में peptide bond along with the hydrogen bond. Remember secondary structure is stabilized by hydrogen bond. Tertiary and quaternary structures they are stabilized by hydrogen bond and disulfide. ठीक है? Disulfide plus hydrogen bond से ये stable हो जाता है. And remember X-ray crystallography is used to determination of structure of tertiary and quaternary structure of your protein. That is a एक important है. इसके ऊपर GPT 21 में question आया था. बोला है मैंने already. तो primary structure कैसे determine करेंगे? So how to determine the primary structure? Structure we'll see in the upcoming slide. But remember over here, secondary and tertiary structure of protein is determined by is determined by X-ray crystallography, which is the most common method for determination of protein structure. Okay, this was question in GPT 21. Now next is determination of primary structure, determination of amino acid composition. So determination of primary structure of protein involves three steps. First one is we will see one by one. Last last candidate I am going to admit. Otherwise we will leave them. B K C ko admit nahi karunga. So primary determination of primary structure of protein. So in that you have three steps. So first step what you have to do you have to determine the amino acid composition. अमोनो एसिड कंपोजिशन उसका क्या है सो इनिशियली प्रोटीन्स आर हाइड्रोलाइज्ड विद एसिड्स और एंजाइम्स सो एसिड और एंजाइम हाइड्रोलिसिस ऑफ प्रोटीन इज डन व्हेन देयर इज अ कंप्लीट हाइड्रोलिसिस सो लिबरेटेड अमोनो एसिड्स सो व्हाटएवर अमोनो एसिड हैज बीन लिबरेटेड और सेपरेटेड दे आर क्वांटिटेटिवली क्वांटिटेटिवली एस्टीमेटेड दैट इज अ डिटरमिनेशन ऑफ अमोनो एसिड कंपोजिशन सो देयर इज वन एंजाइम नोन एज अ प्रोनेज There is one enzyme known as a protease, which is a mixture of certain proteolytic enzyme, which can hydrolyze protein completely. And whatever amino acid sequences are there, it can be separated by chromatographic technique, and it is estimated. So first step. Second step is the degradation of protein and polypeptide into smaller fragments. So protein is treated with the urea or this uh, guanidine hydrochloride, which liberates the polypeptide by disturbing the by disturbing the uh, disulfide bonds by disturbing the, the disulfide bonds this urea and uh, this guanidyl guanine hydrochloride so spelling is still why are so urea and guanine hydrochloride they liberates they hydrolyze the or they liberates the protein into smaller fragments of peptide or polypeptide so degradation of protein or polypeptide in a smaller fragment so protein is treated with either urea or guanine hydrochloride so they disturb the disulfide bond in the secondary and tertiary protein okay so for example quaternary protein kaise banta hai aapko malum hai ki two or more polypeptide they will form they will come together to form a quaternary structure by hydrogen bond and by hydrogen disulfide and 
ionic interaction okay so out of that disulfide bond is relatively stronger so that bond is broken down by this urea and guanine hydrochloride which liberates polypeptide by disturbing the disulfide bonds causes dissociation of protein densyl chloride densyl chloride is also one, one of the h reagent that binds to n terminus so amine acid ka jo n terminus hota hai c terminus one peptide bond form ho gaya do amino acid ke beech mein ek amino acid ko n terminus rahega aur ek amino acid ko carboxy terminus hai so this uh, densyl chloride relatively binds with the, selectively binds with the n terminus so you can determine the amino acid sequence this reagent binds to if now this protein is treated with the uh, densyl chloride to identify the number of polypeptides polypeptides are broken down into fragments by enzymatic or chemical or acid hydrolysis then d determination of amino acid sequence by sagnus region edmonds region we have seen what is the composition of sagnus region what is the composition of edmonds region in the previous slide there is another machine known as automatic sequencer so there is a, also a automatic sequencing machine which can determine the amino acid sequence. now nowadays it is nowadays it is also available what are the different types of bond present in the protein structure there are two types of bond normally that present in the protein structure first one is a covalent bond and second one is a non covalent bond two type ke bond hote covalent bond ek hota hai non covalent bond bhi hota hai protein ke structure the covalent bond mein kaun se kaun se bond hote so in the covalent bond peptide bond is a your covalent bond conh disulfide bond disulfide bond is a also a covalent bond okay peptide bond disulfide bond these are the covalent bonds now what are the non covalent bonds that that are present normally in the protein structure so that are nothing but the your hydrogen bonds hydrophobic hydrophobic bonds van der waal forces electro electro electrostatic bonds these are the non non covalent bonds now properties of protein protein ke properties kya hai so what are the properties so when you shake a protein with the water so they will form a colloidal solution okay now <laughs> what is the molecular weight of protein so molecular weight of protein will be in a range of 4000 to uh, 4 lakh 40000 delta uh, so you can see here i have also uh, given some examples so insulin is a protein so insulin is a hormone and that nature of insulin is a protein so it is about 5700 deltons the molecular weight of insulin is 5700 delta then molecular weight of myoglobin is again protein present in the muscle myoglobin so it has a it has a 17000 delta molecular weight then molecular weight of hemoglobin is a 64.64450 delta now human albumin has a molecular weight of 65 to 69000 delta this was question in gpet 21 molecular weight of your albumin और सो मॉलिक्युलर वेट जो है उसका या थोड़ा सा याद रखने का ट्राई करो सो व्हाट एवर मॉलिक्युलर वेट इज देयर दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो रिमेंबर ओवर हियर सो इंसुलिन का मॉलिक्युलर वेट है आपका 5000 सॉरी 5700 मायोग्लोबिन दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन द मसल इट हैज अ मॉलिक्युलर वेट ऑफ 17000 ओके देन हीमोग्लोबिन का कितना है 64400 डेल्टा एंड दिस योर अल्बुमिन विल हैव अ मॉलिक्युलर वेट इन द रेंज ऑफ दिस 65 टू 69000 डेल्टा दिस वाज क्वेश्चन इन जीपेट 2000, so this was question in जीपेट 2000. so protein का shape क्या होता है? what are the different shapes of protein? insulin will have globular shape, albumin will have oval shape, fibrinol, fibrinogen that is a blood clotting factor which will have fibrous or elongated shape. so protein will have different kind of shapes. so जैसे insulin को होता है globular, albumin को होता है oval, fibrinogen को होता है fibrous or elongated. then isoelectric ph so what do you mean by isoelectric ph the ph at which the ph at which amino acid amino acid will exist in a zeta ion zeta ion means amino acid will carry both pos positive plus negative charge and therefore the net charge on amino acid will be neutral so that is nothing but the isoelectric ph again i will uh, define it. so isoelectric ph means the ph at which amino acid will exist in a zeta ion zeta ion means they will have both positive as well as negative charge and uh, the net charge will be zero that is nothing but the isoelectric ph so proteins are nothing but the polymer of amino acid so protein also will have isoelectric ph so for example your pepsin will have isoelectric ph 1.1 casein will have casein often formed in will have 4.6 albumin will have 4.7 urease enzyme will have 5 isoelectric ph 
hemoglobin will have 6.7 that is the another property now precipitation of protein now, protein can be precipitated by different methods so by dehydration or neutralization reaction of polar groups so whatever polar <laughs> polar groups are there in the protein structure so that can be dehydrated or that can be neutralized so that protein will be precipitated now precipitation can be done at acidic pH precipitation can be done by salting out Salting out is nothing but the phenomena that is where there is a dehydration of protein by using neutral salts like ammonium sulfate or sodium sulfate. So that is nothing but the precipitation of protein. So if uh, proteins treated with this uh, re reagent like ammonium sulfate, sodium sulfate, they are the natural salt and the phenomenon is known as the salting out. Then protein can be precipitated by heavy metals like lead mercury or denaturation of protein. What do you mean by denaturation of protein? So that is nothing but the loss of native structure of protein. Loss of native structure of protein. So whatever the secondary, tertiary or quaternary structure is there. So that native structure is lost. When that native structure is lost, let's say many people like quaternary me kya raha hai bond, disulfide bonds rahe Secondary structure ko kaas se stabilize hota hai, hydrogen bonds se. Tertiary, disulfide bond, hydrogen bond. Quaternary same. So that disulfide bonds and hydrogen bonds are broken down. जैसे क्वार्टर में क्या हुआ हीमोग्लोबिन में चार ग्लोबिन मॉलिक्यूल हैं चार ग्लोबिन चेन है वो साथ में आके हीमोग्लोबिन बना चार चेन सेपरेट करने के दैट इज नोन एज अ डीनेचुरेशन ओके डीनेचुरेशन मींस लॉस ऑफ नेटिव स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ योर प्रोटीन इट मे बी इट मे बी ट्रीटेड बाय डिफरेंट मेथड लाइक फिजिकल मेथड और केमिकल मेथड तो सिंपली जस्ट टेक अ प्रोटीन एंड शेक इट विगरसली तो इट कैन बी डीनेचुर और यू कैन यूज अ हीट कोएगुलेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन तो आप अंडा अंडे को आप हम क्या करते हैं अंडा जब उबालते हैं तो उसमें जो प्रोटीन है वो सब क्या होता है कोएगुलेट होता है दैट इज अगेन डीनेचुरेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन जैसे ऑमलेट बनाते हो ऑमलेट बनाते टाइम पे अंडा क्या होता है लिक्विड होता है ऑमलेट बनाने के बाद अच्छा सा मस्त ऑमलेट बनता है दैट इज नथिंग बट द डीनेचुरेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन सो डीनेचुरेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन विल हैव अ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट इफेक्ट ऑन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ प्रोटीन सो डीनेचुरेशन कैन बी अफेक्टेड बाय फिजिकल मेथड और केमिकल मेथड now denaturation will leads to following thing what are these things so first loss of physical structure so denaturation will lose the physical structure of the protein but not primary structure or not a primary structure okay so loss of native structure will be there but retention of primary structure loss of biological activity suppose that you have insulin so what is its function to bring down the blood sugar level now if you heat the insulin if you denature the insulin now the insulin will not be Active biologically, denatured proteins will not be active biologically. So loss of biological activity again uh, result in the insolubility. Result in the insolubility. Uh, insolubility me, जैसे आप denatured करते हो protein को, तो वो insoluble होता है. जैसे एक example of एक, अपने अंडा पड़ता है, उसमें liquid आएगा, उसमें वो dissolve होता है, water वो वगैरह इसमें. But if you boil that एक denatured, there is a denaturation of protein. That protein is not soluble. Okay. So denaturation will lose the biological activity of protein denaturation will result in the insolubility and it will also increase the viscosity of that protein okay? it will also increase the viscosity of protein suppose that your there is one test known as a albumin urea albumin test urine albumin test denaturation again increases the ionizable and sulfhydryl group contained in the protein so denaturation increases the ionizable group and sulfhydryl groups in the protein this is a quaternary or tertiary structure ka protein ka apne denaturation kiya to usme kya hoga ki there is a separate disruption of your sulfhydryl groups uh, disulfide bond so you will get sulfhydryl bonds okay so ionizable groups uh, they are increased by because of this denaturation denaturation ki wajah se kya hoga hai uska solubility bhi kam ho jata hai denaturation ke baad kya hota hai uska biological activity protein ka loss ho jata hai देन उसके बाद में सोलिबिलिटी क्या होगा कम हो जाएगा उसका इन सोलिबल बन जाएगा देन अगेन हीट को एगुलेशन टेस्ट इज कॉमनली यूज टू डिटेक्ट द टू डिटेक्ट प्रेजेंस ऑफ अलूमिन इन यूरिन बेस्ड अपन द को एगुलेशन टेस्ट सो सो योर पैथोलॉजिस्ट विल टेक योर यूरिन सैंपल एंड ही विल हीट इन द टेस्ट टू एंड ही विल देन चेक द अपीयरेंस सो इफ अलूमिन इज प्रेजेंट द यूरिन विल बी लिटिल बिट क्लाउडी इन नेचर ड्यू टू The coagulation of albumin protein is present in the urine. So that is the best upon the denaturation of protein. These are the additional points. You can see one amino acid. One amino acid will 
amic peptide peptide bond is nothing but the c o n h so whatever this is i will uh, mark it is this is amino acid and this amino acid it form a peptide bond this is a peptide bond so this is peptide bond and this is known as amino terminus this is known as amino terminus yahan pe jo hai o minus hona chahiye this is known as a carboxy terminus yahan pe c o minus hona chahiye yahan pe hota hai carboxy terminus so that's how the formation of peptide now uh, this is a secondary structure of your protein you see over here both are nothing but the secondary structure of your protein the stone is nothing but the alpha helical structure of protein so you can see here is nothing but the helix it is nothing but the one spiral structure here is nothing but the helix it is known as alpha helical structure of protein and uh, it is stabilized by hydrogen bonds so in the alpha helical structure hydrogen bonds are parallel to polypeptide backbone so this is the polypeptide backbone and hydrogen bonds over here these hydrogen bonds are parallel to polypeptide backbone the alpha helical structure axial distance axial distance of amino acid between axial distance between amino acid is 1.5 angstrom तो यहाँ पे जो डिस्टेंस है ये कॉमन एंसर यहाँ पे इसके बीच में जो डिस्टेंस है दैट इज वन पॉइंट फाइव एंसर वन कंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ पॉलीपेप्टाइड चेन ओनली वन कंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ पॉलीपेप्टाइड अल्फा एलिकल स्ट्रक्चर बीटा प्लेटेड शीट सी यार इन केस ऑफ बीटा प्लेटेड शीट तो हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स वॉट एवर हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स आते हैं दे आर परपेंडिकुलर टू पेप्टाइड बैक बोर्ड यू कैन सी वो है हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स आर परपेंडिकुलर टू पेप्टाइड बैक बोर्ड The axial distance between two amino acids is 3.5 angstrom over here. It's just a little bit difference between alpha helical and beta plated sheet. But in case of beta plated sheet, or more constituent polypeptide chain, beta plated sheet they can constitute one or more polypeptide chain. But alpha helical structure will constitute only one peptide chain. Okay? Yeah, so this alpha helical se one key peptide ban sakta hai. Beta plated sheet se ek ya do peptides. Again, you can see over here. it is a structure of your alpha helical alpha helical or alpha helix and it is structure of your beta plated sheet so you can see the hydrogen bonds they are parallel in case of alpha helical structure they are parallel to uh, peptide backbone so beta plated sheet they are perpendicular to peptide backbone okay now levels of organization of protein a primary protein primary structure of protein me kya rahega kaise hoga so you can see over here so it is a structure of your primary protein the primary protein hai aapka isme kya hai ye dot dot these are nothing but the amino acids so so these amino acids they are joined together by only the peptide bond okay c o n h bond that is present in the simple peptide or primary structure so protein that is the primary structure of protein so is a sequence of amino acid chain joined by peptide bond now in case of secondary structure you have alpha helix and beta plated chain so in that case You have hydrogen bonds. So this secondary structure is stabilized by hydrogen bonds. Remember, secondary structure of protein and sequence of amino acid are linked together by hydrogen bonds. They are stabilized by. Now this is the structure of tertiary protein. So tertiary protein, so all kind of bonds, peptide bond, polyhedral bond, in the tertiary structure, all kind of bonds are present. Bipeptide bond, hydrogen bonds, tertiary structure. So when two alpha helical structure or beta plated sheet They comes together, joins by hydrogen bond, disulfide bond, you know, ionic bonds, the hydrophobic interaction, and electrostatic bonds. So that is a tertiary structure of protein. And such two or three polypeptides comes together, so you will get a quaternary structure of protein. So is the protein consisting one or more amino acid chain? That is a polypeptide chain. Amino acid chain is polypeptide. This is just a organization level of protein structure. Now uh, different proteins. Classic classification of different proteins. Proteins are classified into different way. First one is simple protein. Simple protein. They are also further divided into two types. So globa globular protein. Globular protein means they will have a oval shape or globule like structure. So they are known as a globular protein. So in that you have albumin like human albumin. A globulin is there like a hemoglobin. Which of the globulins can chain up there. So that is a hemoglobin example. Then glutein is there. So these kind of proteins are found in the plants. Prolamines, histones. These are the histones, globins, proteins, lectins. All these are the examples of your globular protein. Now second one is known as second one is known as sclero protein. Sclero protein. It is also known as a fibrous protein. Remember, fibrous protein or sclero protein. For example, 
कोलेजन सो बोन्स एंड योर ब्लड वेसल में जो कोलेजन है दैट इज अ फाइबरस प्रोटीन मोस्टली दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रोटीन आर हैव अ स्ट्रक्चर दे आर अ स्ट्रक्चर स्ट्रक्चरल फ्रेमवर्क ओके इलास्टिन इलास्टिन मोस्टली फाउंड इन द टेंडॉन्स इन कैराटिन यू नो दैट कैराटिन इज फाउंड इन द नेल्स एंड योर नेक्स्ट वन इज अ कंजुगेटेड प्रोटीन कंजुगेटेड प्रोटीन मींस दे आर द कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉम्प्लेक्स विद द अनदर अदर ग्रुप नोन एज अ प्रोस्थेटिक ग्रुप सो इन केस ऑफ न्यूक्लियो प्रोटीन सो द प्रोस्थेटिक ग्रुप इज नथिंग बट द डीएनए और आरएनए those protein which are found in the combination of your nucleic acids they are known as nucleic protein now glycoprotein means it is a macromolecular complexes with the uh, sugars so sugar plus protein in dono ka complex glycoprotein mucoprotein you know that who is the what is mucoprotein mucoprotein jo hai example aapko already maine do teen bar so that is nothing but the, they are the type of glycoprotein lipoprotein means a complex of lipid with the proteins complex of lipid with the proteins so lipoprotein is maybe two thing type ka aata hai hdl high density lipoprotein ldl low density lipoprotein chylomicrons very low density lipoprotein then next one is phosphoprotein in this phosphoprotein phosphoric acid group is there this is a prosthetic group for it for example example casein casein from milk casein from milk is a example of phosphoprotein homoprotein metalloprotein metalloprotein means protein will be in the metalloprotein is protein will be in the in the combination of metals for example of hemoglobin h hemoglobin hemoglobin me kya cobalt hai hemoglobin is a metal of protein derived of protein means what derived of protein means hydrolysis product of these proteins so hydrolysis of product of this any above is a simple protein or conjugate protein unka hydrolysis product hydrolysis karenge aap to aapko milega derived of protein these are the hydrolytic product of your simple so primary derived of protein So, coagulated proteins, proteins, meta proteins, they are just do, done by acid hydrolysis. With the weak acid hydrolysis, weak acid hydrolysis, we will get primary derived protein. With the strong acid hydrolysis, primary hydrolysis, or strong acid hydrolysis, you will get you will get a secondary derived protein. So, proteins, polypeptides, and peptides. This is just a classification of your proteins. We will see very important part. metabolism of amino acids and protein so actually uh, yeah, they have mentioned lot of things in your syllabus for gpad it is not important much important so every individual amino acid will have some metabolic pathway so uh, metabolism of glycine metabolism of uh, phenylalanine metabolism of tyrosine so every every amino acid has its own metabolic pathway the reaction okay so if you want to read you can read from the uh, biochemistry by satyanarayan okay but uh, that is not much important for gpad but for your knowledge you can read okay now we'll see the important points from metabolism of amino acids so normally what happens normally you a normal adult will have its own amino acid pool metabolism of amino acid and protein so adult has around 100 gram of amino acid free amino acid which is a known as a amino acid pool of your body so normally Eight gram of free amino acids are present in the your body, known as the amino acid pool. Glutamate, glutamine. These glutamate and glutamine that they constitute around 50% of amino acid pool. So amino acid pool is me 50% contribution in kai rega. And essential amino acid will be around 10% the amino acid pool. So out of 100 gram amino acid pool, 50% will be glutamate and glutamine amino acids, and uh, 10% will be essential amino acid. So P M vital. Vital phenylalanine, M is methyl. Vital is uh, valine, then isoleucine, threonine, tyrosine, and uh, alanine, lysine. That's it. You can easily remember by just one trick. That is known as a PM. It is. There is no storage form of amino acid as such as a uh, carbohydrate and protein. Like I have told you, sorry, carbohydrate and lipids. So we have seen in the carbohydrates. So storage form of glucose is insulin. Oh, sorry, storage form of glucose is a glycogen so for lipids storage form of uh, lipid is nothing but the uh, triglycerides or uh, adipose tissue in that triglycerides and fats so there is not no such a such form for amino acids so proteins are the polymers of amino acid but they have their own function so they are not a pool okay? they are not a storage form this form is what whenever your body will require that that will be immediately mobilized and broken down Like glycogen, 
जैसे आपके बॉडी को ग्लूकोज का रिक्वायरमेंट होता है ग्लाइकोजन आपका तुरंत लीवर में ब्रेक डाउन हो जाता है वो ग्लाइकोजन बना ही इसलिए जाता है कि ग्लूकोज स्टोर कर सके तो इस ग्लाइकोजन से कोई ग्लाइकोजन का दूसरा कोई फंक्शन नहीं है इज नो नो सच काइंड ऑफ सोलिस फॉर्म फॉर अमाइन एसिड इज ओनली हंड्रेड हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ फ्री अमाइन एसिड दैट इज ऑलवेज मेंटेन इन द बॉडी इन द अमाइन एसिड तो नॉर्मली थ्री हंड्रेड टू फोर हंड्रेड ग्राम प्रोटीन पर डे कॉन्स्टेंटली ब्रोकन डाउन साइमटेनियसली दे आर सिंसाइज तो अराउंड थ्री हंड्रेड टू फोर हंड्रेड ग्राम ऑफ प्रोटीन इट इज डिग्रेडेड और मेटाबलाइज और साइमटेनियसाइज विच रिप्रेजेंट द बॉडीज प्रोटीन टर्न ओवर दे इज वन स्मॉल पॉलीपेप्टाइड Known as a ubiquitin, ubiquitin which facilitates the degradation of protein. So, ये एक protein है ubiquitin. वो क्या करेगा protein का breakdown के लिए breakdown increase करेगा body. To 50 gram of protein must be supplied in the diet to maintain a nitrogen. It's just an introductory part of metabolism. Metabolism of amino acid. Now, amino acid will undergo two main reactions. First one is known as transamination. and then second one is deamination for the transamination and deamination there will be release of ammonia amino group of amino acid will combine with the ammonia to form a urea which is the end product of protein and amino acid metabolism so, amino acid jaise protein ka metabolism hota hai jaise protein breakdown okay kya banta hai baad mein amino acids to so, amino acid ka metabolism is common for protein acid will undergo reaction like transamination followed by deamination transamination ka matlab transfer of amino group deamination matlab removal of amino group okay for liberation of ammonia that ammonia will combine with the amino group of another amino acid to form a urea this is the end product of your in an amino metabolism amino acid metabolism now whatever the carbon skeleton is remained so that is a transmitted whatever carbon skeleton is remained that is transmitted and utilized to convert to acid so whatever skeleton is there that is converted to keto acid and then enters into again another cycle it can be Utilized for the source of energy, synthesis of glucose or source of energy. Formation of ketone bodies and non-essential amino acids. Carbon skeleton after transamination and deamination. Transamination. What is transamination? Transfer of amino group from an acid that is from an amino acid. As in this amino acid, the keto acid enzyme transaminase. This is dependent on the peroxyl phosphate, pyrophosphate. This is a coenzyme required for enzyme, enzyme transaminase. It is a reversible and transamination is important for production of non essential amino acids what is the uh, what is the significance of this transamination important for production of non essential amino acids energy uh, ketone bodies and all this glutamate is the only amino acid which undergo oxidative deamination the number here the glutamate is the only amino acid which will undergo oxidative deamination so uh, this uh, this was proposed by one scientist known as snell and brustein Snell and Brustein they have proposed one theory known as a ping pong by by theory. Amination reaction. No, we do no need to go in the detail. We are not studying for your semester exam. I'm just highlighting the points which are important for your. Another reaction is known as a deamination. So, transamination means transfer of amino group. Deamination means removal of your amino group. So removal of amino group by amino acid from urea from ammonia and urea. So into deamination is catalyzed by it dehydrogenase into deamination amino acid okay that is catalyzed by amino acid oxidase enzyme the enzyme mostly occurs in the liver and kidney so the main reactions hote transamination and deamination oxidative pathway non oxidative deamination which leads to liberate ammonia without undergoing the oxidation by enzyme amino acid dehydrogenase to form a respective alpha keto acids and again Another enzyme is there by amino acid sulfhydrase. So there are two that are responsible for the non-oxidative deamination. So oxidative deamination only one amino acid that can undergo oxidative deamination. That is a glutamate. Rest of the amino acids we have non-oxidative deamination. It's the ammonia without undergoing the oxidation enzyme. Amino acid dehydrase with convert which convert amino acid into respective keto acid. and another enzyme is known as amino acid dehydrase the liberated ammonia the ammonia whatever is the ammonia which is generated liberated in the transamination deamination then it is trans transported and utilized to synthesize non essential amino acid then purines pyrimidines amino sugar etc etc to jo ammonia banta hai transamination deamination reaction mein 
वो अमोनिया का यूज क्या है उसका यूज है ये वट एवर अमोनिया इज रिलीज दैट इज यूटिलाइज इज ऑफ नॉन इसेंशियल अमोनो एसिड्स यूरिन्स पिरिमिडिन एंड अमोनो शुगर्स नाउ डिस्पोजल ऑफ अमोनिया दिस इज ऑफ हाउ देर इज अ डिस्पोजल ऑफ अमोनिया ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ डिस्पोजल ऑफ अमोनिया सो दिस देर आर थ्री क्लासेस ऑफ एनिमल्स इज अमोनोटेलिक टेलिक and uri uricotelic and uriotelic you might have seen this in the uh, 12th lecture amoenotelic means those animals okay animals like fish and other they dispose of ammonia in the surrounding water that is amoenotelic so ammonia is a principal excretory product uricotelic means it is converted into uric acid and that uric acid is disposed of for example in case of reptiles and birds birds ke karke जो अमोनिया है जो बनता है वो दैट इज कन्वर्टेड टू यूरिक एसिड एंड दैट इज डिस्पोज ऑफ इन दिस एंड नाउ यूरियोटेलिक यूरियोटेलिक मींस ह्यूमंस लाइक मैमलियन अमोनिया इज कन्वर्टेड टू यूरिया इन द मैमल्स इंक्लूडिंग मैन ओके इज वाटर सोल्यूबल एंड इट कैन बी इजीली एक्सट्रेक्टेड थ्रू यूरिन सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ डिस्पोजल ऑफ अमोनिया सो दीज आर द थ्री कैटेगरीज अमोनोटेलिक यूरिकोटेलिक यूरियोटेलिक नाउ टी ऑफ अमोनिया You no know, dispose of ammonia. If whatever ammonia is formed in the deammonization and transammonization, so some part of that is utilized for synthesis of non-essential ammonia acid, uh, purines, pyrimidines, ammonia sugar. But what about the rest, rest quantity? So the remaining quantity must be disposed of throughout the body. Otherwise, uh, ammonia in if it is increased in the body or if it is a uh, accumulated in the body, so it is a harmful to brain. Okay, whatever is brain is that is being damaged by ammonia. So if ammonia is accumulated in the body, that will damage your brain. When accumulates in the body, result into slurring of speech. जैसे आप बात में जैसे कोई किसी ने अगर बहुत ही ज़्यादा पी रखी है तो वो कैसे बात करता है? वैसे that is slurring of speech. Slurring of vision and can cause tremors and may leads to coma and death. So this ammonia has to be disposed of disposed of from the body. it is a toxic to your body disposed of urea cycle it is the final common pathway for your metabolism of protein it is also known as creme krebs hanslet cycle urea cycle is also known as krebs hanslet cycle is ke upar question aa sakta then urea cycle is the first metabolic cycle was elucidated by hans krebs kurt hanslet that's why krebs hanslet cycle is synthesized in the liver and transported to the kidney for excretion now urea has two amino groups okay urea mein kya hai two amino groups nh2 c double bond o nh2 that is the structure of urea so urea has two amino group one from one from aspartate uh, one from amino acid respectively amino acid urea cycle is a five step reaction two enzymes for a re okay so the enzymes required for first two steps that are present in the mitochondria and the rest of all enzymes are present in the cytosol fraction of your cell ye do steps rahenge uske liye jo enzyme lagta hai wo cytosol mein nahi hai wo rahega aapka mitochondria mein theek hai cytosol mein aata hai so first step that is the synthesis of synthesis of carbamyl phosphate step of the cycle that is synthesis of carbamyl phosphate cps Which is irreversible step and rate limiting step in the urea cycle. ये क्या आदर्श आप urea cycle आपने बार में देखते हैं नीचे rate limiting and reversible step. That is the formation of carbamyl phosphate, which is irreversible and rate limiting step. Now four ATPs are consumed in the urea cycle. ये भी याद रखो. The cycle will not do any kind of ATP, but ATP will be consumed in the urea cycle. So four ATPs are consumed in the urea cycle. Just an example of transamination. ऑयल Will be converted to carbamyl phosphate by glutamate dehydrogenase. Release of alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate. Is real alpha ketoglutarate? Where will it go? So, this will go to your Krebs cycle. 
so whatever alpha keto glutamate is released over here that will enter into Krebs cycle. Glutamate dehydrogenase will convert glutamate into ammonia. Sorry, glutamate dehydrogenase will convert glutamate into ammonia. Release of this alpha keto glutamate. Now this ammonia will combine with the uh, ammonia will be taken up by carbamyl phosphate synthesis and will be converted to carbamyl okay. phosphoric acid or uske sathme ammonia combine okay carbamyl phosphate banega. Now uh, there is a one ammonia acid non proteinous ammonia acid not in ammonia acid we have seen this in morning lecture there is a non protein ammonia acid so with this carbamyl phosphate and will be converted into citrulline by ornithine transcarboxylase citrulline will be converted into arginosuccinate okay succinate by uh, arginosuccinate synthetic enzyme succinic acid will be together no succinate no succinate arginosuccinate will be converted into arginine by arginate arginosuccinase enzyme with the liberation of humeric acid or humerate you have arginase over here so you have to get here double NH2 group of it arginine will be taken up by arginase enzyme and converted into ornithine with the liberation of urea this urea is nothing but the water soluble and it is excreted through urea urea cycle next one is a very important point metabolic defects of urea cycle if there is any metabolic defect in the urea cycle so what kind of disease or uh, you will have so that is a hyper ammonemia type 1 due to the defect in the carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 so whatever the first enzyme is there so that will convert ammonia into carbamyl phosphate okay ammonia into carbamyl phosphate so if there is a deficiency of that enzyme you will get the hyper ammonemia type first ammonemia means that your body will ammonia to the defect in the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 now one is known as a hyper 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 ammonemia second and that is due to the ornithine transcarboxylase if there is a defect in ornithine transcarboxylase transcarboxylase there is a hyper ammonemia second citrullinemia citrullinemia is due to arginosuccinate synthetase defect in the arginosuccinate synthetase next one is the arginosuccinate arginosuccinic acid urea it is due to the defect in the enzyme arginosuccinase so whatever the steps of urea cycle is there so whatever enzymes are required so any defect in that enzyme leads to ammonemia or citrullinemia citrullinemia means the word here there are two terms are mia and ria chakravarti nahi mia mia matlab terms ke aage ma a likh do ma mia means increased level in the blood okay this is uremia so increased the urea in the blood theek hai this is hemoglobinemia this is the hemoglobin level in the blood so mia means anything that is increased in the blood so this is creatinine creatinemia creatinemia means increased creatinine level in the blood okay mia means mia means blood and ra ye laga do ria ria means urea okay creatinine urea creatinine urea so creatinine ia glucose urea so glucose glucose ria baad mein ria lagate to glucose ka pe urine mein iska matlab hai so ria matlab urine mia matlab blood Arginine is hyper arginemia means increased level of arginine body's arginine. These are the some metabolic defect of urea cycle. Now again, this is very very important. This chart is very very important. Metabolism of individual amino acid and their defect. So I'm not going in the detail of metabolism of amino acid. And you have to say that amino acid is the metabolism of amino acid. If you have to study it, you can study it in the book. Important for uh, GPAD amino acid and their metabolic disorder is a glycine. What is the metabolic defect? Glycine urea. Glycine urea. Glycine urea matlab, pe urine mein glycine mil That is due to the defect in the absorption. Okay. That is due to defective renal reabsorption increased the serum serum level of glycine. So defective glycine reabsorption that causes the glycinuria okay. then second one is the primary hyperoxaluria the hyperoxaluria is the oxalosis to defect in a glycine transaminase enzyme agar glycine transaminase enzyme ka defect hai that increases the 
urinary oxalate which result into oxalate stone so aapko ye agar ho gaya to kidney stone ho jayega hyper oxaluria so that means increase in the uh, level of oxalic acid and oxaloacetate or oxalic acid so that oxalic acid will combine with the calcium and uh, other ions of body that will form a salt oxalate salt that will lead into the kidney that is nothing but the kidney stone okay or renal calculi Defect in the glycine transaminase, which increases the, which leads to increase the urinary oxalate level, and now known as the primary hyperoxaluria, mainly due to is the protein targeting. Next one is the phenylalanine. So whatever defect of phenylalanine, it was questioned in GPAT 2018.